Improving our health care system only works if everybody does their part. And while there remain some significant details to be ironed out, I believe, I believe a broad consensus exists for the aspects of the plan I just outlined. Given all the misinformation that's been spread over the past few months, I realize, I realize that many Americans have grown nervous about reform. So to, tonight I want to address some of the key controversies that are still out there. Some of people's concerns have grown out of bogus claims spread by those whose only agenda is to kill reform at any cost. The best example is the claim made not just by radio and cable talk show hosts, but by prominent politicians that we plan to set up panels of bureaucrats with the power to kill off senior citizens. Now, such a charge would be laughable if it weren't so cynical and irresponsible. It is a lie, plain and simple. There are also those who claim that our reform efforts would ensure illegal immigrants. This, too, is false. The reforms, the reforms I'm proposing would not apply to those who are here illegal. It's not true. And one more misunderstanding I want to clear up. Under our plan, no federal dollars will be used to fund abortions, and federal conscience laws will remain in place. Now, now my health care proposal has also been attacked by some who oppose reform as a government takeover of the entire health care system. Now, as proof, critics point to a provision in our plan that allows the uninsured and small businesses to choose a publicly sponsored insurance option administered by the government just like Medicaid or Medicare. So let me set the record straight here. My guiding principle is and always has been that consumers do better when there's choice and competition. That's how the market works. Unfortunately, in 34 states, 75% of the insurance market is controlled by five or fewer companies.